Good morning, guys. By now, you can probably tell that I am positively obsessed with the power of the human mind. One of the things I heard before, I actually have read it over and over in Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, is this. The number of lines that connect all the different brain cells, neurons in our brain is represented by the number one followed by 15 million zeros. So the number one million has six zeros. The number one billion has nine zeros. Now try to follow that pattern and imagine. That is phenomenal to me. When I heard that, the scientists have figured that out and they've, made, and they've realized that the human mind has interconnections and they're all organized in an organized fashion and they make astronomical numbers look minuscule. I thought, wow, we all have the most powerful thing in the universe. Hope this helps everyone. Have a great day. Rise and shine. It's espresso time. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and successful people don't wake up and go, yes, what another day to be alive. But when you have a morning routine that sets you up for success, like watching one of these videos, it will change your life. So let's start your day off right together. Grab your coffee, know that I believe in you, and get ready for a shot of Espresso from Grant Cardone. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. Is there any daily disciplines that you have in your yeah. life, daily routines that yeah. you would attribute to your success? Uh, yeah, I try to beat the sun up. Uh, I write my goals down every day, hmm. and I try to get, I try to hit the gym. So I don't do it perfect every day. Sure. Um, some things throw me off, and and um. You know, unfortunately, I have a I, I created a lifestyle where where some things are taken care of for me that 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 um, most people don't have that that option. You know, somebody drives the kids to school. I don't have to do that. That would change everything if I had to do that. Who knows? Maybe I need to. Maybe I need to start driving the kids to school. It seems like a complete waste of time to me. But um, I live two two minutes from my office. Uh, so when I bounce out of here, I got to go do a live, a live stream on real estate. But, but, uh, yeah, that, that's the first three things. If I can get that done in the morning, man, I know I'm going to have a good day. Yeah. Pretty simple. Beat the, beat the sun up. Make sure you write down your goals. Yeah. Make sure you take care of yourself, get the blood flow and get the heart pump in. Yeah. And I, and I write my goals down fresh, a new unit, like in a new unit at a time. Like I uh -huh. write them down today. Like I had never written them down before. Nice. Yeah. Staying consistent on your morning routine is the difference between you having a good life and a great life. The life that you're living right now, which is good. Listen, you have a good life right now. If you're watching this, you have internet, you have food, you know, you have a place to sleep tonight. You have a, you have a pretty good life. You have a pretty good life, but it's not a great life. You know, you know, you're capable of more, you know, you want to do more. You know that where you are right now is not where you want to be. That Imagine a year, two years, five years. Imagine if you were still in the same spot in five years. Imagine your life, your health, your relationships, your finances, the impact you're having, your, your routine, your daily, like what you're doing on a regular, and nothing has changed in five years. It'd still be a good life, but it's not a great life, right? It's not a great life. This is the struggle and that you know you're capable of so much more. If you didn't know you're capable of more, ignorance is bliss. You just keep living your life. But when you know you're capable of more, this is the, the curse of the achievers. Like, you know you're capable of so much more. No matter how much people look at you and say, hey, wow, you're doing so well. You're doing so much. That, that's why you're watching these videos. You are the most ambitious person that you know. People look to you for guidance and wisdom, advice and support and encouragement and hope and inspiration. Like, you're the one filling other people up. You're the one inspiring other people to do better, to be more to go after their dreams. That's you, but who's doing that for you? You know you're capable of so much more. And so how do you get it? How, how, do, you, how do you do the work? Well, it's a daily thing. This is, <laughs> this is part of the challenge is it's a daily thing. It gets boring. It gets boring to do the exact same thing every day. 
to stay consistent on what you said you were going to do. And we start to doubt ourselves. You have days where you're motivated, inspired, ready to take on the world, feeling amazing. And other days where you don't feel so good and you think, you wake up feeling like, who am I? I can't do this. What I said I was going to do that. You look at your goals like, I'm, I'm going to do that. There's no way I'm going to do that. Me? I'm going to stay in bed. It's the thing achievers don't talk about is there's a lot of days when you just don't feel like you're worthy of it. You don't believe in yourself. You don't think that you can do it. And it's just that consistency that prevents you from doing the thing. Because you have the days when you're on fire and then entire days, maybe weeks sometimes, where you're just not doing anything. And so how do you, how do you keep that momentum? How do you keep that consistency? It starts with the morning routine. And the goal of morning routine is to help you feel motivated, bold, courageous, ready to take on the day. That's what the goal of a morning routine is. Everybody's got a morning routine. If you're watching this, you got a morning routine. Everybody doesn't have a morning routine. Most people actually wake up like an accident, right? Most people wake up and they fall into their day and they look at their phone and it's other people's emergencies and other people's demands for your time. That's most people's day. But for you, if you're watching this, you're, you're an achiever and you have some kind of morning routine. But most people's morning routine are also broken because you're not doing it consistently enough or you're not doing it with enough intent. So if you ask, what's the goal of a morning routine? The goal of morning routine is to get you bold and prepped and ready for the day. Let me ask you this. If you were to, for the next year of your life, right? 365 days, the next year of your life, you're going to wake up and do something that would make you feel bold, powerful, courageous, motivated. Not asking you to wake up feeling bold, powerful, courageous, motivated, but to wake up tired, however you wake up. <laughs> I woke up tired today. You wake up and then you do something that will help you feel bold, powerful, motivated, courageous, and ready to take on the day. If you woke up and did that for the next 365, how much does your life change? How much does the next year change? How much does the, does the impact that you're making, does the actual momentum that you're taking towards your goals, how much does that change if in the next year you actually did that? It should be tremendously, it should be dramatically because no matter how much you do in your morning routine, one, you're probably not super consistent on it and two, you're not getting the feeling even if you are. That's what needs to change. I was in New Mexico and I was doing uh, on Super Bowl Sunday, my workshop. <laughs> and it was uh, the smallest group on our tour. And we we're talking about morning routines. And there was a woman there and I asked her, what, what's the most important part of your morning routine? And she said, prayer. I said, so you pray, how often do you pray? Every day, every day, every day. She prays, she prays, perfect. How often do you feel the prayer? How often do you feel the connection? And how often are you just saying the words? And she said, like, half the time. Great. Other people might look to her and say, well, look, you do it every day. Even for herself, she might look at herself and say, great, I did it every day. As achievers, we like to check the box, right? You like to check the box. Say, I did it. 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 I prayed. I watched the video. I read the book. I brushed my teeth. I whatever. You have your checklist and you did it, right? And you feel great that you did it. But if you don't get the feeling of courageousness, and you just check the box, it doesn't count. So watching a video might be part of your morning routine. Great, I, I'm, you know, if it's mine, I'm honored to be a part of your journey. If it's somebody else's, amazing, do that too. But if you know that watching a video is the thing that helps make you feel alive, bold, confident, you know that there are some days that watching a video actually makes you feel that way, and other days where it doesn't. And you know that watching the same video over and over and over and over every day will lose its impact super quick, right? Day one, you're motivated. Day two, already you've lost like 80% of the motivation that you got from day one. Day three, it's basically over. You, you run it for a month, forget it. Like you've already memorized the words that the words don't mean anything to you anymore. So you have to have some variety. And if you're watching a video while you're doing something else, this is the achiever's curse. You're watching a video while you're brushing your teeth while you're taking the dogs out, while you're cleaning the sink, while you're making the bed, you're distracted, you're doing something else, you're trying to multitask, right? Here's what happens to the achievers. You still get to check the box to say that you watched the video. But because you weren't present 
for the video, guess what happens? There was no retention. There was no feeling. You don't feel ready to take on the day. You don't feel the boldness, the courageousness, and therefore you don't go and have a great day, even though you checked off everything on your morning routine. That's what makes a difference. So if you get to the end of your morning routine and you don't feel bold, powerful, courageous, ready to go for the day, there's one of two things that you have to do. One is you audit your morning routine. You say, what's missing? You know, like, does this still work for you anymore? What's missing? Do I need to add something in? Do I need to add an espresso video in during the morning? Do I need to add reading? Do I need to add working out? Do I need to add writing my goals down? Like, what do you need to do to add and tweak and experiment and see if it makes you feel better? Or two, maybe you just need to do the routine again, but with more intention. Maybe you did the whole routine while you were distracted. Maybe you did the whole routine while you're thinking of something else. So you don't get the feeling. There's nothing wrong with the routine. The routine is great. The routine is perfect for you. But if you don't show up with intention, if you don't show up and be focused on it, you're not gonna get the feeling. You could sit there and be in the chair. You know, think about going to classes, going to school. You could sit there and be in the chair. It doesn't mean that you're gonna learn. You could sit there and watch a video, but if you're brushing your teeth and doing eight other things, you're not gonna get the feeling. This is the loving push forward that I hope you accept. Because everybody else is gonna look at you and see how much you're doing and how perfect you are and how much momentum you have and how many things you're doing and they look up to you in awe and you're an inspiration to them and you should be because you are doing amazing things and at the same time you know it's nothing compared to what you could do but the difference between where you are right now and where you want to go is actually not that big the difference is just minor tweaks between where you are right now and where you want to go for most of you it's just minor tweaks this is one of those minor tweaks that if you could just stay consistent on having a morning routine and then inside of that consistency, doing the thing that makes you feel bold, powerful, unstoppable, alive, ready to start the day, not expecting to be amazing when you wake up, but then doing the thing that brings that out of you every single day, your life will change. Now I've got a special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week. When you watch a video and just get motivated, the science says you have a 35% chance of actually following through on your goals. That, that's not good enough. No, not for you, Believe Nation. We gotta do something. But when you write it down and you create a specific plan of action for the next week, that number jumps to 91% chance of you following through. And when you commit to somebody else, like leaving a comment on this video, it jumps to 95%. You need to follow through on your goals. So what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and your specific plan of action for the next week? Put it down in the comments below so I can celebrate you. Hey man. Everett, how you doing buddy? Good, how are you? You got a book coming out, don't you? Uh, you just came out. Where can people get it? Get it on uh, Amazon, easiest spot, built to serve, right there. Let's go, man. If you guys don't know Evan, follow Evan Carmichael. He's got a new book out, Build to Serve. Go grab it today at Amazon. There's a good dude right here. I understand the affirmations and mental and be positive and meditation. How about some action? Yeah. You know, like, like I, you know, I have never thought something into existence without doing something. This is why I don't buy houses, okay? This is why Brand Brandon's seen this presentation before, okay? This is my favorite topic in the universe. <laughs> because 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 this this is what allows me, this is what allows me to move, okay? So when I buy 15, when I take 15 million dollars, okay, I buy 60 million dollars worth of real estate. 15 million buys 60 million dollars worth of real estate, okay? Okay. Well, and we, 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 I'm not buying, I'm not buying $60 million deals. So I'm buying, I'm buying, I'll, I'll do, I'll do a billion dollars worth of real estate this year. Okay. Y'all, can y'all look at that number? Okay. This is what I'm going to do this year. So I'm going to take $300 million this year and I'm going to buy $1.2 billion worth of real estate. To me, it's a good deal. Today, we travel 3,300 miles to meet up. I can become a billionaire. I can own a billion, control a billion dollars worth of assets. 
for 300 million. All I got to do is figure out how to get 300 million dollars. God damn, this is like God, this, this is all the math I needed. I could have learned this in a fifth grade. Don't need any, any, I don't need any algebra, no trigonometry, calculus, don't need any of it. This, multiplication, leverage, $300 million worth of cash, buys $1.2 billion worth of real estate in America, okay? That $300 million is gonna pay me $18 million a year in cash flow. Is that right? I think that's right. I'm gonna get paid $1.5 million every month to control $1.2 billion worth of real estate, okay? This is cash flow. Cash flow is what? It's freedom, baby, it's freedom, it's flow, it's current. It's a current, currency, the word currency comes from current. If you look it up in the dictionary. Current, it has to move. See this right here, the 1.2 billion is not moving. That's good too though, that's good because you want something that's, that's illiquid that will grow, right? This is the flow. The flow allows me to keep the asset until it appreciates. We're looking for unusual activity. Okay, there's unusual activity going on right now. It, you see it every day if you're looking for it. People are moving out of New York. Entire companies are starting to move. New Jersey, they're complaining about it, okay? They're pissed off as hell. The government, they, they changed the rules on um, writing your state taxes off against your federal. Now, what's that called? Uh, salt. So, used to be that I paid 13% in California, and then I'm paying 48% in, in federal. I could take the 13 off the 48. Now it's not like that. Now it's 13 to 48, or 38 or 39, whatever, it's terrible. Okay, so I take $300 million cash, it's worth less than 10 years from now. How many believe this 300 million is worth less than 10 years? Yeah. You don't need another math class. It's, it's, you know, it's going down to value. I take the cash, the trash, and I buy concrete, steel, and glass. Where people live, okay, we don't buy any retail, nothing. No Macy's, no Bloomingdale's, maybe one day, but not today. These people have to have a place to live. When we buy this asset, it is cash flowing. We know it's gonna make us 6%. In, in the first year, five to 7%, somewhere in that range, we should be paid on that deal, okay? So, so this is really important, this cash flow right here, this cash flow is what will get you through a contraction. You have to have cash flow to assist you through contraction. Training.
sin temer Procuro ser mejor que el día de ayer Esa es mi bandera, esa es mi misión Reparto buena vibra por doquier Mi vida es un derroche de placer Por eso la bailo como esta power of you controlling your breathing right now. Feel the power of you enjoying your greatest gift right now. That's you. That's your presence. That's your greatest power. Your power to determine to stay in the present, in the now, and be your true great being that you are. No matter what, in this present moment, everything is here you need. So let's see ourselves today doing the best we can gym of life. Here we are again. Controlling our minds. Controlling our breathing. One great thought at a time. One great breath at a time. So see yourself doing your best on all the exercises we do today, together, here and now. That's your determination, your greatest power, power that's the same in you and every human being on the planet. determination. How's everyone doing today? What a day again. Great day. Here we are. May not like exactly all the conditions that are going on right now, but we are here right now together working on our minds and working on our bodies. So here we go. When I say go, we're going to start doing our best jog on the spot or you can go back and forth if you want to just walk. Remember to keep in mind the safety of the space you are working with. Always keep that in mind. Here we go. Thank you. 
When I say go, we're going to do our best jog ever. But you got to see it in your mind first. That's where everything begins, in your mind. But to be your true great self, you also sometimes have to get out of your mind just to be you. Just to be. Here we go. Jog it on the spot. And feel the control of you. Breathing in through your nose. And out through your mouth. You always have that power. That power to determine. To take control of your breathing. Your mind and your body. That's what keeps us here and now. In the present. The greatest gift we all have always. Determination, keep going. All right, and let's walk it out back and forth, or just walk on the spot if that's all the space you have. All right, everyone, let's start off with our shoulder rolls. Here we go. 10 shoulder rolls forward. So the power of all of us right now, watching this, working together on one thing. No matter what's going on, we can stay in the present right here, right now. And backwards. Circles forward. Here we go. Arm circles forward. Ten forward. And we'll go ten backwards. Boom. Feel the power of you enjoying moving your body. Being free to move through space. And backwards. Okay, here we go. Now let's do hands on our hips. Bend your knees and side stretch. All right, and let's twist our body now. So five on each side. Keep your feet flat on the floor. All right, excellent. Okay, let's do five push-ups together. Our best five push-ups. Here we go. If you gotta keep your knees down on the ground, that's fine. Let's do the best we can. All right, let's do five sit-ups. All right, and standing up, and let's do five squats. Our best five squats. Excellent. Let's do lunges. Three on each side. Arms up. Excellent. All right. And 10 second planks. Bring these knees off the ground. Hold it there for 10. Stand up and reach for the sky or the ceiling on your toes, depending on where you are. Feel the joy of reaching. If you lose your balance, get back up again. Never give up, no matter what. All right, now let's reach for our toes, straight knees. Again, feel the joy of the process of you reaching. Trying to go a little bit further than the last time, but don't hurt yourself. You know the truth about you and how much you can do. Right here. 
here right now. Okay, and come on up again. Let's balance. Grab one leg. Find that balance. Again, if you have to imagine yourself with roots underneath your feet that are have grown through the ground fully deep into the earth, do that. If that helps you. And switch. Notice the power of all of us right now. Controlling our minds, to control our bodies, to control our breathing, and to control our balance. All right, and now let's hug our knee. Here we go. Bend the other one if you have to. Find that balance point and pull the knee up. Hug your knee, give it a good hug. And switch the other one. in this moment right now. It's the same way you can do it in anything in life. All right, okay, and let's uh, sit down and reach for our toes, straight knees. There we go. Feel the gift of you. I'm trying to be your best, the best you. Not your best compared to others, just your best you. shape with our legs and let's reach for the floor as far away from our body as we can. Again, enjoy the process. Enjoy the reaching. We'll never get to an end. There is no end. Here. Reach for one to the other side. Three. We gotta learn to love the process of everything we're doing. That's what will always keep us mind healthy, and more importantly, mind wealthy. And switch. Mind wealthy meaning that we choose courage, we choose determination over fear, over giving up. Okay, and let's bring our feet together and gently push our knees down with our elbows. Hold it there for 10 seconds. Always remember your breath. And one leg forward, one leg back. Go as far back as you can. Keep that knee down. Just feel the power, the joy of this moment. How we win, one moment at a time. And switch. Infinitely intelligent. We control our minds. All right, and let's roll onto our bellies. Push the floor and look up at the ceiling or the sky, wherever you are. Ready? Here we go. Okay, and legs crossed again. Back straight. Eyes closed. Breathing in through our nose. Out through our mouth. Feeling the joy in every breath. Now, let's see in our mind today the vision we want to create for our best exercises. For me today, I'm going to see myself doing my best on each of the two songs I choose, on one exercise each. So I'm gonna see in my mind, myself holding the lunge position for each leg as long as possible. Hopefully for the duration of the first song. And then for the second song, I'm gonna see myself holding a V sit-up position as long as I can. You don't have to choose those exercises. You may if you want, but you can see in your mind right now, Whatever exercise you love doing, as long as you're doing it safely. You can dance, you can jump, you can do jumping jacks, lunges, squats, whatever. 
whatever your heart desires right now. As long as you stay safe, you know how to stay safe. You're made of rules, truth, principles that are designed to keep you safe, happy, successful, and free and peaceful all the time. It's a matter of want. You gotta want to be safe, healthy, and happy. You gotta want it so bad. Everybody, here I go. My best to hold the lunge position on each leg. What about you? What are you going to do? Whatever you do, remember, your happiness is dependent on you doing your best on whatever it is you're doing. So here we go.
next one for me is holding my V sit up position. Even if I if I let go, I'm gonna get back up for the full duration of the song. Whatever you're doing, enjoy it fully. Follow your heart and soul. Here we go. have and be your true, peaceful, happy, kind, loving self. No matter what. So we 
reflect back on your effort today, always remember that if you gave your best in whatever you were doing, that you can do it now, you can do it forever. That's what makes you a winner. To be happy and peaceful. To be mind healthy and wealthy. Always. No matter what's going on outside your mind. No matter what anybody or anything suggests about you. Any negativity. That's all a lie. It's all losses. Losses that we, with determination, we get to transform. gift ever. Love you all so much. Take care. Major reason for success <clears throat> at the beginning is to have an idea. The most important word huh, in our business is desire. I am very competitive, so it's like in tennis, I always want to win. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Believe Nation. Top 10, I got a top 10, got my motivation high for my top 10, gotta learn from the wise women and men, all my life. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and I make these videos because you are probably the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more, and you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today, let's learn from one of the best, Bernard Arnault, and my take on his top 10 rules for success. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one. Have an idea. Our culture is based mainly on creativity, and in a startup, the major reason for success <clears throat> at the beginning is to have an ID, a, a creative ID, an innovative ID that is <clears throat> really putting the, the company uh, with an advance to everybody else. It should be, to be successful, a game changer. Rule number two, create an impeccable brand. When I was managing the family business, which was in a different sector, I happened to uh, enter in contact with a group in France that was uh, having problems, uh, business problems. And in this group, there was Christian Dior. And I was interested by business, and I wanted to turn around this group and build on, which I think was at the time, the best asset, and the best asset was Christian Dior. And, and I was interested in Christian Dior <clears throat> for a long time. Because the, the, the first time, you know, you are very young, but the first time I was in New York, it's in uh, 71. And I remember the first time I arrived at uh, Kennedy Airport, I took a cab. And at the time, the president of the U.S. was uh, Richard Nixon. By the way, they were devaluating the dollar during the summer where I was there. I bought dollars and my dollars went down. But I arrived at the airport and I started to talk to the cab driver. And he loved France. And he was interested in politics. So I asked him, and he did not like Nixon. So he was talking uh, about that. He said, you love France, so what do you know in France? Do you know the French president? It was Mr. Pompidou at the time. <coughs> Nobody here remembers, but uh, he said, no, I don't know the French president, but I know Christian Dior. And 
immediately it struck me and showed that the name of Christian Dior is one of the, if not the most known all over the world in many countries. When I go to China, when I go everywhere, it's the name which is the most well known. So, as far back as 71, I understood the power of, of a name. It's not enough, but I think it's one reason also. When by chance uh, I was in contact with the real company, uh, I think it's when I had the idea uh, of doing this. Rule number three, be prepared. I am interested in business. So in business, uh, I think we are in a very strange period for several years. Uh, money is almost uh, costing zero, if not a negative interest, which means that some companies, as LVMH for instance, when we borrow money, we are paid to borrow money. I think it's dangerous. Two, uh, you have a lot of money in the markets. Three, the prices of assets like stock prices are extremely high. So I am very optimistic for the world for the long term. But I see as unavoidable that a crisis happen within the next few years. I cannot tell you exactly when, but bubble are inevitably building up now. And at one point, they will explode. You know, it's the first time I have seen that since I am in business. And since I am in business, I have seen crises almost every 10 years. It very soon will be over the last period of 10 years without anyone. So, rule number four, execute well. Almost as important as the idea at the beginning is the execution. And the fact that building on the idea must be really very professional, very efficient, and that also makes a difference. I have seen a lot of startups with very interesting ideas, but with also some other competitors, almost with the same ideas. But only one or two of them are successful. It's because the execution of their business plan. So it's key for the long-term success uh, of a startup to be able to execute well. Also, if you want to have more self-confidence and self-belief, I've designed a special free training to help you do it. The science says it can take up to 254 days of consecutive action to build a new habit. And, and I want that for you. I want you to build the habit of self-belief. So what I'm going to do is email you every day for 254 days, a link to an unlisted video that will shift your belief forward to get on it for free. The link to join is in the description below. If you have a great product, lots of people will buy it. <laughs> and then the company will be successful. You really have to believe the internet's going to be mainstream. A lot of people are going to get out there and use it. Your number one job is to become more of yourself and to grow yourself into the best of yourself. Rule number five, welcome new ideas. I think our companies are very involved in the tech world because tech has more and more importance on uh, the way we do business. For instance, if you take uh, one of our companies, Sephora. Sephora is doing uh, a lot on e-commerce in the U.S. For instance, it's the number one site selling beauty products in the U.S. So we are always in touch with new ideas, with newcomers, with uh, startups, and we try to find the best. For instance, in LV Image here in VivaTech, we have had 800 uh, application for the startups. We chose 30 of them, and among the 30, we will uh, choose one, two, or three that will be announced tomorrow. That I think we think will be the most promising uh, for the future. Rule number six: Create quality. What do you think the definition of luxury is? Uh, first of all. I don't like very much the word luxury because you have something attached to it which means show off, which means something of non-significance, you know, something futile, something that is useless. You know? And 
I think a better definition is combination of quality and creativity. Now, it's how I define what we do. Uh, obviously, these products, because of the very high quality uh, they, they have, because of the high level of innovation, they are expensive. But the reality is really uh, behind uh, the appearance, behind the price, it's the quality and the innovation that people are looking for. So for me, it's a definition. And <clears throat> in the group, we are really concentrated on this. How can we create the most uh, innovative products? And, and the, the creators or the scientists that work with us in the many laboratories we have, they have complete freedom to express new ideas, and after that, we have to transform them in um, reality all over, the, all over the world. Rule number seven, be fair with the consumer. When the currency is going down, we have the possibility of increasing gradually prices, uh, like we did recently in the US, 5%, because our products are so in demand that we can do it. But obviously, we are very fair with the consumer. When the currency goes back up, which can happen, which happened in the past, we do the opposite. So we can decrease prices also. If, for instance, the dollar comes back up, we can also play it the other way to be fair with our consumers. Rule number eight, start small. For us, it's, um, I would say, a way of life because uh, almost all of our brands were startups. If you take, for instance, Christian Dior, it was started from scratch in 1947. And we try to keep the same spirit, which is the spirit of being close uh, to the founder and close to a movement and new ideas. And uh, also, I must say that the startup, the startup we st see today, their goal is not to stay a startup forever. They want to grow. Uh, the goal of a startup is becoming a large company. Uh, if you take, uh, for instance, Facebook or uh, Microsoft, uh, they were startup at one point. Now they are quite big. And we try to help the startups that we chose today to become big success. And I think it's the goal of every startup. This being said, it's not always easy. Rule number nine, create desire. You have students in marketing, but I often meet students in marketing. And in spite of the group being number one with the students in France, in the desirability to work in the group, I always tell them we don't do marketing because marketing is against what a company like us should do. Because marketing, what is marketing? Marketing is to <coughs> analyze what the customer wants and then try to follow what the customer is looking for and uh, test what you create following these trends and try to, to do it. We do completely differently. We create new products and sometimes it fails, but when it's successful, the customers follow. So the marketing is not for us part of the product creation. The marketing is after. The marketing is when uh, we have these products, uh, how with these products, which people want, maximize the desire. Because our business, you, you asked the question about luxury. Luxury, for, for me, is how can you create desire? The, the most important word uh, in, in our business is desire, how to create desire. And 
when you have the product, then you have to create a good environment huh, in the shops, and you have to present it well, you have to do uh, well, uh, good films if it's a perfume, uh, good uh, advertisement uh, either in the <coughs> magazine or in the internet if it's a, if it's a, a product. You know? so that's the way I, I see and we see in, in my group uh, uh, the, 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 way to, the, the way to put product in contact with uh, the, the consumers. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip is be competitive. I am never bored. It's what I have in mind. When I think of myself young, it, it's fun. You know? And I am very competitive. So it's like in tennis. I always want to win. You know? And that's fun. Now I've got some special bonus clips that I think you're going to enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I want to know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week? When you just watch a video and you get motivated, the sign says you have a 35% chance of actually following through. That's not good enough, Believe Nation. We need to take some action. But when you watch a video, you get motivated and you create a specific plan of action. That number jumps from 35% to 91% chance of you following through. And when you publicly commit to other people, like leaving a comment down in this video, your number jumps to 95% chance of you actually following through on the plan you set for yourself. So I wanna know your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week. Leave it down in the comments below so I can celebrate you. We are investing for a long time. Uh, we are buying, investing in startups of any kind, fashion startup, digital startup. I think the, the best example I can give you is a Sephora. You know, when we invested in Sephora in the 90s, it was a startup. And today, it's maybe the largest retailer of beauty products in the world. 